Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be fixing up a brass electric locomotive I found on eBay. I found this a few months ago. I don't know very much about it. I believe it is a Japanese model, and according to the seller, it doesn't run, but that's all the information I have on it. So anyways, today we're going to unbox this thing. We're going to test it out and try to fix whatever problems it has, and hopefully we'll be able to get it running again. And uh, there it is. It's uh, a little bit rough around the edges as you can see. In fact, it's already gotten worse in shipping. The wheels have popped off it, so that's something that we're gonna have to fix. Um, but other than that, the fundamentals of it don't look too bad. It looks like most of the parts are here, which is really what matters when you buy a junked locomotive. Now, uh, as I said, the seller claimed it did not run. We're gonna go test that theory by bringing it over to the track and we'll see if it will do anything. With most brass locomotives, a uh, short circuit's a pretty common problem but it could be a whole variety of other things. So let's go figure it out. I'm quite interested to see what this thing is going to do. There's something kind of fascinating to me about putting something on the track which possibly hasn't run for many years, if not decades, and just giving it power. So we'll do just that, and we'll see what happens here. Um, I'm not seeing any current draw so far. Well, oh, <laughs> this thing's uh, actually not so bad. It moves. Yeah, the performance is not the best, but this is like a million times better than uh, I was expecting. This is probably just something that's been sitting for a long time. So yeah, it's far from perfect, but um, with a bit of work, I think we can get this one going. So let's bring it back over to the workbench. So those test results were certainly a lot more optimistic than I was expecting. I was pretty certain we were gonna have a short circuit or something like that, but it doesn't seem to be so. I think we've just got a locomotive, which has probably been sitting for upwards of 10 years. Now, uh, I've never opened one of these up before. We need to somehow drop the motor assembly, and I don't see any screws directly on top. So my guess is that we just have to to remove these screws right here and hopefully if we remove them all the frame will pop out I don't know we'll just uh, take them out and see what happens I guess So here we are inside. You can already see some kind of uh, subpar wiring right here. A lot of loose wires. I don't really love the look of this. So there's certainly already visibly some uh, room for improvement here. Uh, as for the motor, it appears to be a uh, five-pole pancake motor. I guess you could call it a pancake motor since it's uh, sort of flat. Other than the wiring, there are some other things around here which are not exactly ideal. The weight popped off. I think we'll be able to get that back on because I did find the nut in the box, so we'll just uh, try to screw that on and hopefully the threads aren't stripped. Uh, but this whole frame is not in terrific shape. You can see that there is a ridiculous amount of bend, like there's hardly any structure here. So I think the previous owner owner kind of tried to bore out some of the metal just so that the motor could pivot a little bit more but they've changed it from uh, kind of an L-beam to just a uh, straight piece. It really just doesn't have the same structure anymore so uh, that's a bit of a problem. Now the shell is actually part of that structure because it screws in here, here, and here. However, the weight of the motor obviously is, you know, connected. So the weight is traveling back through this section. So that might become a problem over time. I think in the short run, it should be okay though. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna try to do some basic maintenance on it. Gonna clean everything up, clean the commutator. I'm gonna leave some of this wiring intact. Uh, this wire looks fine to me. So does this one and this one. I mean, the soldering is not ideal. Uh, but right here, this is fraying and stuff. It's really just a opportunity for a short circuit to start, so we're going to remove that. To start off, we'll just do a little bit of cleaning with some rubbing alcohol here. Just try to get some of this junk which is stuck to the motor off. All right, with the metal looking a little bit better, I think I'm gonna start uh, taking apart some of this old wiring here. Let's 
wire is just uh, unbelievable. I mean, it's just uh, crumbling apart all over the table here. I also uh, don't really love how the uh, wiring's been routed. I believe that this is supposed to go through this hole right here, so there's definitely been uh, some subpar maintenance done on this over the years. And while it's easy to access the motor, we'll just do some work with a, uh, a fiberglass pencil here. Just before we go uh, reconnecting all these wires which uh, need to be fed through the shell, I think I'm just going to quickly uh, tackle the gears. It's a pretty simple system down here. Obviously, you've just got two belts which uh, power this set and uh, a worm gear and gear. So we're just going to clean the teeth of that out and just try to get any loose grease. Uh, nothing too fancy, but it should help this perform just a little bit better. What's uh, really important is that you just uh, get the teeth all cleared out and you also just check for bits of hair and things like that which sometimes get wound around axles. Uh, those sorts of things can really put a lot of extra strain on the motor and even potentially burn it out. So just cleaning all this stuff out can really improve it. Uh, with this all tidied up now I'm going to uh, add some fresh lubricant. With metal parts you want to pick uh, a nice thick grease, something that's going to have enough viscosity to protect these two parts from chafing each other away. Got some uh, Labelle 106 grease, so we're just going to uh, put a good serving of that right there. And we'll throw some oil on it as well. Also just uh, quickly add a bit of oil to the top bearing here, because uh, what I want to do is I want to actually start the motor up and just have it kind of circulate this grease through. And now we just flip the wires around and circulate everything the other way. And you can kind of hear the uh, RPMs start to pick up as the grease circulates, but uh, the bottom line, everything is now properly coated, so uh, we're not going to have to worry about those parts wearing down. I think at this point what I'm going to do is now just uh, lubricate the rest of the components, so uh, all of the journals on the wheels. I also need to get some of the wheels uh, back in place because uh, another set just popped out there, unfortunately. But uh, it's coming along one piece at a time. Pilot wheels on this locomotive are very strange, and what I mean by that is on one side you've got, I don't know, some sort of nylon wheel. It's pretty unusual, and I thought it's kind of odd that they decided to use the other set to pick up power. These are all metal, um, but they're isolated on both sides, so uh, neither side on this locomotive actually serves to uh, pick up power. I don't know why they made it like that. To me, this seems like a way, you know, you could get a little bit more power to the motor and make it run slightly more reliably, but that's uh, what they decided to go with. It's kind of strange. In some cases when you're installing wheels like this, you have to check which side is isolated, but as I said, both sides are isolated on this locomotive, so it doesn't really matter. So I think at this point we can start to put all the wiring back together here.
Okay, with all this wiring looking a little bit better, I think we can probably get the shell back on the locomotive. I don't know if I'm gonna screw it down just yet because I don't entirely trust it. I think it would be a good thing if we went and did a track test first, but uh, yeah, we'll at least just get it on there. And uh, now what I wanna focus on is uh, cleaning up these wheels because as you can see, it's far from the worst out there, but uh, they could certainly use a little bit of cleaning. I got those wheels looking a little bit better. It's certainly an improvement over what it was, so I think at this point we can take this thing over to the track. I'm not so sure how it's gonna run. I just find uh, everything on this locomotive seems a little bit worn out, but uh, we'll try it out and hopefully we'll be okay, and then uh, if there's any problems, we can uh, definitely make improvements to it. So let's go uh, try it out. Right, time to see if it will do anything. Oh. Oh, and we're shorted. Hmm, let's crank up the volts here and it will probably just roll right through the short, yeah. <laughs> so the motor and everything else sounds pretty healthy. The gearbox wasn't too loud. However, as I would have expected, there are short circuits in this thing. It just seems to be such a common problem with brass locomotives. So there definitely are some spots where this thing could be making a reference to ground. I don't entirely trust that connection between uh, this set of wheels and the frame, so that could be one spot. It's also possible that uh, either of these sides could be touching this. I think given what we've done with the wiring, that's probably not the issue, so... Yeah, I think we'll focus on the wheels at this point. It almost appears right here as if the nut has in fact worn its way um, into the washer, so that could certainly be causing a short circuit, so I think I'm gonna try to remove that. It's kind of difficult because the uh, screw head is on the other side and that's all soldered to the frame so I'm not really sure how to disassemble this but um, yeah, we'll just keep trying things until something happens. Yeah, there we go. That is not doing its job anymore so that's probably our main issue honestly. Well, it's a while later. I did a little bit of work off camera and isolated all of this. Unfortunately, uh, removing that nut was a little bit of a challenge. You can probably tell by some of the scratches here, but uh, either way, I got it removed, put a new isolator in place. So I think that this locomotive should be good. So let's take it back over to the track, see if that didn't make a difference. Of course, when you're dealing with all brass components, there's about a million other things which could be the culprit. But I feel like that had to have been at least one of them. So let's give this thing a chance here. All right, moment of truth. Hey, actually seems to be gone. Okay, so a bit of a derailment, but uh, that is actually way better than I was expecting. It was kind of running smooth, which is impressive considering that it doesn't even have all of its weights installed. So uh, I think we still have to do a little bit more work, but uh, that seems to have uh, solved the short circuit. So I think at this point we can safely put the weight back in and seal it all up. It seems to be running just fine for itself. And I think uh, adding that extra weight will hopefully uh, stabilize it a little bit because the lights were flickering and so on. So let's go ahead and do that. I think that that's the correct way. Whoops. Well, I think in reality it was probably about time to uh, redo that soldering anyway, so let's just uh, tackle it. Alright, let's go take this thing for a run around the layout. I'm almost half expecting this thing to have developed some kind of a problem from being put back together again. I don't know, it just kind of seems to be the way sometimes, but let's give it a chance. Oh yeah, okay, it still runs. 
Let's see if it can go a couple of laps here without derailing. I just quickly made some adjustments to the wheels and that seems to have fixed the derailing problem. So I think at this point I'm just going to let this thing kind of run around the layout and uh, get some trackside shots of it. Well, I've been running this thing for about 10 minutes and I'm overall very happy with the performance. Just before we finish things off, I just want to quickly test out the low speed and see what this thing is capable of. It does have a five pole, so it should be okay. Let's see how low it will go here. Well, it's cogging quite a bit, but it's not stalling, which as far as I'm concerned is a pretty good measurement of uh, how healthy the drive is. I mean, this is also just an older style of locomotive, so the design is, you know, not perfect. But uh, yeah, I really uh, couldn't be happier, you know? This thing seems to run really well, which is quite impressive for something which maybe has been sitting for, I don't know, 10 years. But anyways, we'll wrap things up there. Thank you all so much for watching.